This time you were born in Albania. Your new country is one of the smallest countries in Europe and is located in Balkans, to be precise. You Albanians have been through quite a lot in the past 100 years. All the positive and negative things that happened here made your country and people quite unique. Although Albania is mostly Muslim populated, around 30% of the people are Christians. Your mother tongue will be Albanian, which is one of the most ancient languages and has a unique pronunciation. The national cuisine was highly influenced by the Ottoman Turkish cuisine and vegetables are heavily used in Albanian cuisine. Even though there are about 3 million people in Albania, around 10 million Albanians immigrated to different countries because of low salaries, high corruption, and less opportunities in their home country. With traditional customary rules, you Albanians can be strict when it comes to certain topics, but it doesn't stop you from being kind and friendly. First, let's find out what kind of childhood you would have if you were born in Albania. There's a high possibility that you'll be named after one of your grandparents. As growing up, you might be taken care of by your grandparents when your parents are at work. But that might not be the case since the head of an Albanian family is considered to be the man, so probably your mom will be a housewife and take care of you while your dad goes to work. If you were born in a Christian family, you would probably be baptized when you're small. Kids are required to attend school at the age of six until they are 16. When you're a pupil, your family will care a great deal about your school life and grades. Although they might come as quite strict, Albanian parents try their best to give their kids the best of everything, and they believe the education is the key in life. Since corruption is a huge problem here, you'll have teachers who take bribe or gift to pass a student or even on special occasions. Unfortunately, drug use is increasing among some teenagers, so be careful who you're befriending with. Since millions of scientists, professors, and smart people have left the country, you can say that salary isn't the highest here. Indeed, many professional workers like nurses, engineers, try to leave the country for better opportunities. The economy is mainly based on agriculture. Your country is also quite rich with oil reserves, but as a citizen, it has nothing to do with you. Just be grateful if you have a decent job. Since winemaking is an ancient practice here, vineyards are common to see in Albania. About 48% of the population works in agriculture, so get ready to eat your lunch in the garden among the trees. But as a teenager, you might not work because of the scarcity of jobs. Since the Russia's attack on Ukraine, the prices have risen and the number of people living in poverty increased. Even though prices are one of the lowest in all Europe, but so are the salaries. So at least one family member in each household have moved to countries like Italy or Germany to work. Maybe in your Albanian family, it'll be you. Poverty rate in Albania is around 20%. If your family is poor, you might have to work at young ages wearing hand-me-down clothes of your older cousins. On some occasions, poverty can stop you from attending school, and you might need donations from different organizations to buy the basics. Certain wealthy Albanians regularly donate money to those in need and help some of them to build a house. Poverty is more noticeable in northern parts of the country, which also looks quite different than major cities and especially the capital city of Tirana. If you're born in a Roma family, life can be harsher. You might grow up in a small house working in landfills and barely making the ends meet. Due to the lack of education, Roma people have a hard time to find a decent paying job. Unfortunately, if you're Roma, your people are one of the most politically, economically, and socially neglected communities in Albania. The meaning of wealthy can be defined in many different ways. In Albania, you're either rich, meaning that you can afford so many things others can't, you have big houses and no worry about tomorrow. Or you're rich, meaning that you own numerous mansions, hotels, restaurants, broadcast networks, politicians, etc. If you're born in a stupid rich family, there's no way you're going to grow up being humble about what you have. You'll probably love to show up your car collections and luxury places you visit and all your meaningless parties on social media. Because who needs money if no one knows about it? There's a high chance you'll study abroad while the politicians your dad hired will talk about how amazing the education is in Dear Mother Albania. So enjoy life before you develop an existential crisis. 
your experience about being a girl in Albania can differ depending on the region you were born in. Although men and women have equal rights according to the law, in northern parts, women might be demanded to obey the rules of their husband or father. So, if you're from northern Albania, you might grow up hearing stuff like, learn how to make this dish, you'll need it when you're married. However, you'll still get education while helping your mom to do house chores. Although most Albanians are Muslims, you'll see very few women with hijab. Even though religion doesn't play the most crucial part when it comes to making certain decisions, Albanian traditional laws, which is called kanun, can sometimes determine what to do in certain situations. Kanun considers the woman as a property who has to bring children into the world. But to your luck, Kanun is not strictly followed anymore. However, your family will still expect certain behaviors and acts from you, and they'll try to fit you in a certain gender-based role. But it doesn't mean there's no Albanian women who have an independent life and make her own decisions. So if you don't have strict parents, you can choose your own career and get married when you want. That being said, Albanian parents generally don't want their daughters to have casual or unserious relationships before marriage. Since many Albanian families favor a male child, you'll receive lots of attention and love if you're born as a boy. In regular families, boys are not required to do much of a house chore except for studying. If you're born in a Muslim family, the chances are the most memorable thing about your childhood will be your circumcision party. It can be a huge party or a small family gathering. If your family decides to celebrate it with all the relatives, then the party can feel just like a wedding without a bride. You'll probably be given money and gifts on this day. It's considered an important event because according to the tradition, that's when you truly become a Muslim. In some parts of the country where kanun is followed, being a man can be cursed because of blood feuds. Although having to kill for revenge is not common anymore, like it was in the past, there are still young boys who are raised to kill to take revenge and go to prison, and innocent boys who are waiting to be killed. All because someone in their family killed someone in another family or raped a girl, and that's how two families become enemies for generations and until there's no one to kill. Truly, an eye for an eye. But fortunately, sometimes family elders talk and forgive each other. Just like girls, many Albanian boys get married to the girls their family introduced to them, so you better forget that classmate from high school. Another unique tradition from your country is about women who live like men. Although this practice is not widespread, and there are only a few such women left in Albania, let's imagine your life as one. Until near past, Albanian men had immense freedoms that women didn't have, so families without a son sometimes would dress one of their daughters as a boy. These women would swear that they'll never get married and always live like a man, so they are known as sworn virgins. If you're a sworn virgin, then you no longer do house chores, but take care of the family animals or get a job to make money for the family. You can wear pants, act freely in social circumstances, and be the head of the family. But also, an alone life is awaiting you. Just like many traditional practices, being a sworn virgin is also mainly in northern Albania. As of 2022, there were estimated to be only 12 sworn virgins left in all northern Albania and Kosovo. Sworn virgins are not motivated by gender identity, but by the need to have a patriarchal role in the family, so they're not considered to be in the LGBTQ community. But if you're a queer in Albania, you might have more hardships than a sworn virgin. Most of the Albanians have a very radical view about the community. Even politicians are not afraid to say on TV that they would kill their own son if he was gay. Indeed, Albania is one of the most homophobic countries in Europe. So you either have to hide your identity here or be mentally very strong to withstand all the insults and threats. Having an ally will be very hard here, but certain organizations do their best to give support to the LGBTQ plus members. It's hard to say that the cities are very developed here. You can see trash piling up in every corner of the cities. Most of the buildings were constructed during the communist era of Albania. Now to erase the traces of that bloody period, the government tries to add some color to the cities. Especially in Tirana, you'll see all kind of street arts on the walls and even on the roads. Apart from that, new bicycle roads have been added recently. 
You Albanians love drinking coffee, so you'll see coffee shops everywhere. There are also museums located inside old bunkers that were built during the communist era. Actually, there are several hundred thousand bunkers scattered all over the country. It's not a foreign sight to see an old bunker in someone's backyard. Cities have an advantage of having hospitals, drugstores, supermarkets near to the residents. However, the same cannot be said about villages. If you live in a village, it can take hours to go to a nearby medical center. In some villages, there's no school for kids, so you might need to walk for hours to go to school. In certain areas, where there are less than 100 residents, you can have a hard time finding a friend and you'd only socialize in family gatherings. Especially in northern parts, traditions are strictly followed, so you should be careful with your words and attitudes. Growing up, you'll probably learn lots of things about agriculture and livestock. Finding a job can be much harder compared to the cities. Sometimes medical workers need to walk long distances every day to check up on a patient. However, having an education and a profession can change your life immensely in a village. Depending on your religion, there are several holidays you'll celebrate in Albania. While Christian families celebrate Easter, Christmas, Muslims celebrate the end of the Ramadan month, Navru's spring holiday, etc. But almost all Albanians celebrate the new year as the major and most important holiday. This is when all your family will come together and have a small feast. Because of the traditional Alban laws, Kanun and the religious background of the nation, you Albanians follow certain unwritten rules like listening carefully when elders talk, standing up when a guest enters the house, etc. But the most important custom is called Besa, which is about keeping the promise you gave no matter what. To fully feel like an Albanian, you need to know your history. After the Ottoman rule ended at the beginning of the 20th century, Albania declared its independence in 1912. But soon after the independence, the country became a kingdom under the rule of King Zog I in 1928. This lasted until the fascist Italy occupied the country and overturned the king in 1939. Italian invasion was followed by German invasion, and after certain political turmoils, the People's Socialist Republic of Albania was established under the leadership of Enver Hoxha. Enver Hoxha was the first secretary of the country from 1946 until his death in 1985. He was a big Stalinist and did many terrible things to the country alongside the necessary developments. Although he did education reforms, and as a result, old and young many Albanians learned to read and write and education became accessible to everyone. He also caused the death of many people and so many others were classified as class enemy and couldn't have the same opportunity as everyone else. He also forbade the practice of any religion. So Albania became the first atheist country in the world. Leaving or entering Albania was also prohibited during his time, which prevented the necessary development the state needed and damaged the economy. In 1991, the first free elections were held in decades. With the win of the Democratic Party, the communism era ended in Albania. Obviously, it didn't solve the problems overnight, and there were several riots condemning the current government. Even though your country still has huge corruption problems and people are still complaining about prices and salary, Albania has come a long way and still tries to better itself in every aspect. If you want to know more about your new country, I'd recommend reading these books. Broken April by Ismail Kadari is all about tragic life of blood feuds in Albania and will have a special place in your Albanian heart. If you want to get a general view about transition to democratic Albania from socialist Albania, you can read Free by Leah Wipey. Sworn Virgin by Elvira Dones have an interesting take about this tradition. All of the above are novels written by Albanian writers. If you have any other recommendations, please let us know in the comments.